Good morning. It's good to see everyone this morning. Uh, if you're visiting with us, please fill out a visitor card and put it in the offering plate. If you're looking for a church, please think about St. Paul's if you're visiting with us. Um, Dallas High Shoals Christian Ministry, the food is spaghetti, spaghetti sauce, and pork and beans this month. Uh, and today at 2 to 3.30, please uh, come to the shower today for Ansley Crisp for a sweet little baby boy that's been born soon. Uh, that's today, so please make plans to come out and do that. Uh, Maud Spiegel Group Monday tomorrow is at 11 a.m. The Welka Board meeting is tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. The Quilting Group this week, Tuesday uh, at 9 a.m. And the Blossoms of Faith, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Please make plans for that. Um, the Soup Kitchen uh, in Lincoln this Saturday, the men's group are going to be doing that. So if some of the men would get with me or Jason Crisp, uh, we're going to be making plans to do that this week. Uh, the Seekers, the Sunday school class, the new Sunday school class will meet next Sunday. So if you're uh, post high school uh, to maybe the 30s, if you're looking for a Sunday school class, they'd like for you to meet. And I think they're meeting upstairs in Bollinger Hall. If you got any questions, see Jeremy about that. Uh, the Relay for Life luncheon is next Sunday. So please make uh, plans to come out to the taco and hot dog luncheon. It's a love offering for our team, Relay for Life team, so make plans for that. And the Spirit and the Youth Group will meet next Sunday right after their luncheon for the Relay for Life. And we still need two people. We need a male and a female uh, to represent us at the North Carolina City. So at the back of your bulletin, there's a little bit about it. Uh, it's a little stapled part at the back. So I'm still looking for someone uh, to represent us, a male and a female. Uh, there at the Synod. So if you would like to do that, please let me know. Uh, there will be no choir practice today. And we have a called council meeting right after church in my Sunday school class downstairs. Uh, and our landscaping crew needs a little help uh, with the weed eating around the church and around uh, the uh, parsonage. So uh, if you would like to help do that, and you can come any time that you want. It doesn't have to be a set time. Uh, and weeding around the tombstones. So they do need some help. But see Boyd Best or Tommy Withers about that. Are there any more announcements that need to be made? If not, we will continue with the introduction to the day. And Meredith Crisp is going to read that for us. The Easter season is a week of weeks, seven Sundays when we play in the mystery of Christ's presence, mostly through the glorious Gospel of John. Today, we gather with the disciples on the first Easter, and Jesus breathes the Spirit on us. With Thomas, we ask for a sign, and Jesus offers us his wounded self in the broken bread. From frightened individuals, we are transformed into a community of open doors, peace, forgiveness, and material sharing such that no one among us is in need. We'll continue with the prelude.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and he has made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord.
The prayer of the day in unison, let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's time for Children's Church. first reading comes from the fourth chapter of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. How good and how pleasant it is When kindred live together in unity It is like fine oil upon the head Flowing down upon the beard Upon the beard of Aaron Flowing down upon the collar of his robe It is like the dew of Hermon Flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For the Lord has commanded the blessing by forevermore. The second reading is from the first chapter of First John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, 
but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand and his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Our gospel lesson is uh, amazing, and it never fails me, and I shouldn't take the time, but, you know, you preach this text so many different times in so many different ways because God keeps saying something different from the same text. So this is the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what God does. The message that God has given me from this text that I've preached so many times for you today is simply this, no more sadness. No more sadness. No more sadness. But sadness, I want you to understand, is an acronym that God has given me. It's it's S-A-D, And the S is for sin, the A is for afraid, and the D is for doubt. So if you're going to make notes, you write those words down. Sin, S, the A is afraid, the D is doubt, and the resurrection and our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ drives away the sadness that sin, afraid of fear and doubt, bring into our lives, into our hearts. So just 
work with me today. Just take a look at this text and, and let's just kind of walk through it and let it speak. You know, this is Resurrection Sunday. Jesus has risen. The, the, the women have gone out and told the report. And here you have, you know, Peter's been to the empty tomb and John, they've been in the empty tomb. And now it's getting around midday or afternoon. And here we see the 12 men who were closest to Jesus, the 12 who saw and walked and talked and saw everything he did, the miracles, the Lazarus, everything. And what are they doing? They are locked up in a room hiding because they are afraid. They're scared to death that the Jews, the authorities, the Romans are coming after them. And there they are, powerless, paralyzed with fear, afraid. I guess that's the first lesson right there in many ways. Because a lot of people today, maybe even here, are living in fear, paralyzed by fear, afraid. Don't know what tomorrow's gonna hold. Don't know how they're gonna make it through a difficult situation, whether it may be anything. An illness could be financial, could be a rebellious child, could be job problems, could be any number of things that are paralyzing us, holding us captive in fear. But the first thing the text teaches us is what? Jesus shows up. He appears without going through the door. He appears in their presence. And I'm a witness, he'll show up for you too. And when Jesus comes, what does he do? He says, peace be with you. God doesn't want you to live in this sadness this fear, this doubt, dominated, controlled by sin. That's not, the sad life is not what he wants for you. So no more sadness. Jesus is rose. He's won the victory. Live in the victory. No more sadness. Now in this text, Jesus appears to his disciples miraculously coming through the door because that's the way his new resurrection body works. It doesn't have to go through the door. It can appear inside walls. Uh, that's the, his, his resurrection body. He appears three times. Well, he says, peace be with you. He appears twice. He says, peace be with you three times. The first time he says that, it is to take away the fear. The second time he says it, is to, he gives them the Holy Spirit. That is to give you the power to overcome and defeat sin. And the third time he says, peace be with you, the week later when Thomas, the doubting one, is there, it is to tell you and to take away your doubts. Don't doubt but believe. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. So, Let's talk about the second one now. I, I hope the fear thing you can see. When, if Jesus could conquer death, overcome the grave, and whether you accept or not the Apostles' Creed that he descended to hell and he still comes out victorious, then what is that for you to be afraid of? If you believe in him, what are you afraid of? There is nothing to be afraid of, not even death itself. Don't live in fear. Don't be afraid of anything. With Jesus on your side, you are more than a conqueror. So I could, I, that's a whole sermon there. That's an hour sermon right there. But I won't do that, right? The second thing is he says receive the Holy Spirit, and he breathes upon them, 
and, and, and this, and then he says, if you forgive sins, they're forgiven. If you retain sins, they're forgiven. He basically says, through the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit, you have power. You have the victory to overcome sin. Doesn't say you'll be perfect. Doesn't say you'll be sinless. But sin will not control you. It does not have power over you. It does not have to doom your life or ruin your life. He gives you power to overcome sin, to live victoriously over it. And, and I don't know about you, that, that's, that's, that's good news to me. That is good news to me. And that, and, and that, that is, 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 is that the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit keeps applying God's forgiveness to my soul. It will guide me so that the mistakes I've made in the past, I will, don't have to make again. The sins I have been guilty of, I don't have to commit those. They don't control my life anymore. I can walk in the newness of life because of Jesus' resurrection and because of the gift and indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit and the very presence of Christ in our hearts, in our souls, in our lives. So that's S-A-D. No more sadness. And here, Thomas. Thomas. I almost wanted to focus. Thomas, Thomas... They, he hears the report. He's walked with these men. He, think, he knows they're not crazy. He knows that, that they're realistic people. He knows that they are committed people. And honest, but he tells them, unless, unless I see for myself, I'm not going to believe. That's a whole sermon right there in the word unless. What are your unlesses? What are you saying unless about? What's keeping you from believing? Or I just say, what's keeping you from growing in your faith? What's, what's the unless that's holding you back and preventing you from being all that God wants you to be? You know, is it unless I have the money I want, unless God gives me the life I want, unless I get the wife I want, the husband I want, the job I want, unless I get healed, unless I get this, unless I get that. What kind of bargaining are you using with God talking about unless he does this, you're not going to believe? No. That's just another way of doubting, another way of bargaining, another way of going in the absolute wrong direction. I surrender all. All to thee I freely give. That's the posture you should have with God. I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. Strengthen my beliefs. Strengthen my faith. Empower me to trust you more. To trust you come. He tells Thomas, and he tells all the disciples, he says, peace be with you. And then he lets Thomas see, touch, feel. And then Thomas believes. So I'm going to just leave with this point. What's embedded in here is the fact that believing the gospel of Jesus Christ, believing in Jesus, is a process. And I believe that process, that, that process can start, you know, before birth, in your parents who bring you to be baptized and who commit themselves to living a life, being an example, creating a culture, an environment, a home where you will believe. And then from your earliest ages, the process of you growing to know the scriptures, the teaching, the Bible studies, being a pastor, scholars, going to confirmation, 
and understanding why you were baptized. The process continues and continues as you get older and you face the challenges of, of, of life, raising families, working in an environment, the culture that you live in, getting older and your body breaks down, you're getting older, closer to death becomes even more. It's still a process and we're growing and growing and growing and growing, trusting more and more so that even the darkness of death turns into the light of the face of Christ. We move into eternity. So believing is a process. You can't depend upon your five senses, taste, touch, smell, sight, Sound, as Jesus points out here, and as John points out, you have the written word of God that presents the living word of God. You have the testimony of the ancient patriarchs, the prophets the apostles, the saints, and the people around you today who know in their hearts of hearts that the gospel is true, that Jesus is real, that he lives, and that he will live in your heart you simply open your heart and believe. Amen. Our hymn of the day. Let us confess to the listening world and to one another and to God above our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please remain standing if you're able. Be seated if you must. Kneel if you choose. We'll pray with your whole heart. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Our conquering Savior and resurrected King of Kings, through the power of your passion and resurrection, please heal our members, Linda Ackles, Jim Bean, Marty Best, Betty Bumgarner, Bobby Cloninger, Jean and Lou Collins, Jerry Chris, Jean Dover, Francis Goins, Grace Harbin, Juanita Harris, Susan Holbrooks, Linda Hoyle, Paula Hull, Ann Kiva, Mark Kennedy, Betty Faye Leinberger, Kay and Malcolm Lynn, Gloria Monty, Louise McManus, Henry Moffat, Betty Pesua, Jimmy Pesawa, Martha Pesawa, Sandy Plunk, Gretchen Robinson, June Rogers, Lisa Rubo, Danny Seyfried, Pat Sellers, Emily Sides, Barbara Sigmund, Todd Stilwell, Sally Terrace, Chris Thornburg, and Lauren Vanyard. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Our conquering Savior and resurrected King of Kings, through the power of your passion and resurrection, please heal our friends and family members, Dana Alexander, Nancy Bollinger, Kelly Bird, Phyllis Castello, Robbie Curley, Tommy Cooley, Tali Kraft, Adrian Jeffries, Don Lowe, the Reverend David Milky, Kara Morehouse, Betty Morrison, Wendy Parker, the Reverend Dale Peterson, Jimmy Pickler, George Potate, Steve Prost, Lacey Roten, Sharon Raphael, Ned Russell, Sharon Sloop, Phyllis Thompson, Cherie Tindall, Tramiel White, the family of Jackson Hall, the family of Ann Ryan, the family of Bill Robinson, and the family of Nash White. Lord, in your mercy, our conquering Savior and resurrected King of Kings, through the power of your passion and resurrection, protect our members in the armed forces, Jordan Barker, Joshua Best, Patrick Cannon, Austin Earl, Mark and Thor Ganak, Blake Hughes, Cody Land, Adam Naylor, Gregory Tyler III, and Gabriel Wagner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our conquering Savior and resurrected King of Kings, through the power of your passion and resurrection, please redeem the world you created in which lands, waterways, plants, and animals meet the needs of all you made. Bless those who work the soil, those who manage animals, nurture bees and other pollinators, protect farmlands and ranches from drought and flood. Grant us an economy that can sustain those families who treasure rural life. Teach us how to share with everyone the benefits of each harvest and accept our gratitude for all the sustenance you provide for us. Lord, in your mercy, our conquering Savior and resurrected King of Kings, please empower us to obey your command to love our enemies. Lead them and us from prejudice to truth. Deliver them and us from hatred, cruelty, and revenge. 
and in your good time enable us all to stand reconciled before you through Jesus Christ our Lord. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our conquering Savior and the resurrected King of Kings, through the power of your passion and your resurrection, keep us ever mindful of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, which says, For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. God and control our hearts as we make difficult decisions and critical choices. Through your Spirit, enable us to stand before you, with you, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our conquering Savior and resurrected King of Kings, please give us the minister of discipleship you want us to have. Guide our counsel, strengthen our ministries, bless our worship with your presence and your power. Bless our Senate, our church-wide organization, all of our bishops, all church leaders in our conference, pastors and congregations. Bless our sister churches, Philadelphia and Holy Communion, their leaders and their families. Please bless all neighboring churches, whatever their denominations, their pastors and their families. Oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of Christ be with you always. Share the peace with one another, and please remember those who are watching virtually, share the peace with them. Take a minute and text them. And thanks to all of you in the virtual church who text me and share your love with me. I appreciate reading those texts. I don't get to respond sometimes until Monday, but I appreciate them. So please, you feel free to send me a text saying peace and know that my heart loves you. Peace to everybody.